welcome back to another episode of Sports Central. Like always, go ahead and smack that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications. So as you can see, we're here at Syracuse University. And man, let me tell you, we got a lot of catching up to do. So I think it's best we go ahead and pick up right where we left off last episode. After pulling off two huge upsets and leading his team to a top 10 ranking, our prospect had officially become the big man on campus. With that newfound fame and notoriety, things begin to change for King. I mean, the Syracuse locals were treating this man like a god. Any and everything he wanted, he had access to. And I do mean any and everything. But look, during the team's bye week, Reggie took a two-day trip back home. During that trip, he was able to reconnect with his family, and he also shot a brand new commercial for Powerade, which of course only increased his stardom even more. But look, everything seemed to be working out in King's favor. Well, <laughs> that was until they went up against a very tough Georgia Tech team. Now y'all remember last episode I told you every school in the ACC is a threat, right? Unfortunately, Syracuse had to find out the hard way as they were handed their first defeat of the season. That loss was a much needed wake up call for Reggie. It became very clear that if he was going to accomplish what no one else has done, he had to do what no one else was willing to do. It was at that moment he became an absolute machine in the gym. He basically kidnapped the team's OC, locking them into an office and going over different defensive schemes until football became a second language. This commitment to greatness spoke volumes with the head coach. So much so, he granted King the ability to call his own hot routes from the line during every home game, thus moving him closer to his goal of becoming a campus legend. Syracuse would go on to win their next game after their loss to Georgia Tech, but then they faced a pretty lousy 4-4 Maryland team. Now, luckily, they were still able to pull off the win, but there was a huge problem. Out of nowhere, the receivers act like they couldn't catch the ball to save their lives. I mean, there was literally a streak of five drop passes in a row. Of course, it was only a matter of time before King started to show his frustration, and honestly, I couldn't blame him. But look, like I said, they were able to turn things around and secure the victory. But I'm afraid the curse of the drop pass will come back and haunt this team later in the season. The next game versus Florida State wouldn't be any easier. I mean, we all know FSU was supposed to be DB University, so the wideouts knew coming in they was going to have to be on their A game if the offense was going to have any motion. The Seminoles would take the early lead and stay out front for the majority of the game, but Syracuse wasn't just going to let them run away with it either. This matchup would start to resemble a heavyweight fight. The offense would land blow after blow after blow but the defense would refuse to go down for the count. With just 30 seconds left in the first half, down by seven, King decided to reach into his bag and pull out all of his tools. We all know just how dangerous he can be through the air, but when he's healthy, he can be just as dangerous on the ground as well. After a huge 20-yard scramble, King was able to throw an absolute dart over the middle to his target, tying the game in 17 just before the first half would end. It would take a very strong ground game to pull off this win. A couple runs up the middle, then a quick pass over the top kept the defense on its toes. That's when Syracuse would pull out the play action pass that would cause a huge hole to open up in the defense. Now, they would go on to pull away in the second half and beat a very tough Florida State team on their home turf. Advancing to a 9-1 record on the season and beginning to look like a real college football contender. Man, would y'all believe me if I told you it's been over 60 years since Syracuse had an undefeated season? Mm, you probably would because for the past decade or so, their football program has sucked. But listen, the team they put on the field this year is different. I mean, yeah, they may have dropped one game versus Georgia Tech, but they will go on from there to completely dominate the ACC conference. Syracuse will earn a spot to compete for the ACC championship, finishing the season off with a very impressive 11-1 record. This moment would be huge for King because not only would he finally be getting the exposure he fought so hard for, but there was also a title on the line. But look, the week of the championship was filled with press conference after press conference and interview after interview. The rest of the team seemed to really be taking it all in and honestly a little bit unfocused. You gotta remember, this program hasn't won anything for a very long time so the spotlight was a bit new to them. Whereas Reggie was coming from being a top prospect coming out of California and he also spent a full year at UCLA. So he was used to the big moment but unfortunately his team was not. Man, listen on neighborhood crippy bloods. The North Carolina Tar Heels not only put a spanking on the hiney of Syracuse, but at one point they just got outright embarrassing. The offense couldn't move the ball up the field and the defense couldn't make a stop to save their life. It got so bad that I asked the producers here at Sports Central if I could grab a jersey and suit up to help out the Syracuse offense, but of course y'all know they wasn't going for that. But anyways, like I mentioned before, man, the curse of the drop pass will come back to visit this team as pass after pass would hit the receiver's hands and then immediately hit the ground. 
Now, the only positive for the game was our prospect was able to break the single season touchdown passing record. But other than that, man, honestly, it wasn't much to talk about. Mental errors by the Syracuse offense and defense led to several penalties for the blue and orange. And then the receivers couldn't find more than an inch of separation. So, of course, that led to several sacks by the Tar Heels defense. Man, we watched the best team in the conference reach the biggest stage and completely collapse. It seemed like whatever could go wrong did go wrong. Now, going forward, man, King has a huge decision to make. With his number one wideout leaving for the pros and many of his other core teammates graduating, should he stay another year here at Syracuse and try to build a team good enough to compete for a championship? Or should he hit the transfer portal once again and see what other opportunities are out there for him?